On today's episode of the Deron Messinger Show, we're previewing and predicting number 22 Texas at Texas Tech. Longhorns fans, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. It's greatly appreciated. So to begin, Dylan, as always, we have some basic game info for everybody. A little bit different than the past weeks because obviously this is a road game for the Longhorns. The game was Saturday, 9-24 at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. Very important that you're watching Central Time, Dylan, otherwise you're going to miss an hour or two of the game. At Jones AT&T Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, the game will be televised on ESPN. And currently, the line moves, but Texas is favored by 6.5 points. So Dylan, what are you feeling on that scouting report? So, Devin, good news for Texas with that improved defense. The O-line is a problem, major concern if for that as well. For Texas Tech, statistically one of the worst um, offensive line units in the Big 12 protecting the QB, and they allowed four sacks and seven tackles for loss to NC State last week. They have second-string quarterback, uh, I believe, Donovan Smith, who replaces um, Tyler Shook, who was a starter last year, who is injured, Devin. They have a new offensive coordinator in Zach Kittley from Western Kentucky. He coached Bailey Zapp, if anyone remembers who he was. He was a round four pick for New England. And they run like a spread slash air raid offense, Devin, that looks like spread, but they tend to pass a lot more than a normal spread team would. Um, Something to look out for, Devin, they do have QB Baron Morton, who's a former four-star Elite 11 QB, one of the highest rated players signed by Tech in recent history. Um, He has a fast release, good thrower on the run, and is also a gunslinger. So that is something to watch out for with Donovan Smith struggling. He has two pick sixes in two games, Devin, which is huge news for Texas. He is definitely very streaky. He could have a big touchdown play, or he could just give the ball away to Texas, and that will be just returned for a quick uh, quick six for a Texas team in desperate need of points in this game. And he also has had five interceptions, Devin, in two games. He is a mobile quarterback, but he also does have that big arm, so you still have to look out for it. But he does have a tendency to make, you know, 50-50 throws that could go to anybody – you're talking about Smith, right? Yeah, Donovan Smith, sorry. Okay. Yeah. And then at running back in the backfield, they've got Taj Brooks and Sir Roderick Thompson, Devin. They haven't been involved much uh, recently um, this year, but that's going to be something that Texas Tech is going to be trying to change, trying to get the ball out of Smith's hands more this game so he, so he can make less mistakes. And Devin, on the defensive side of the ball, that's their strength, surprisingly, for a Tech team. They're strong up front. They rank 18th in the nation for rushing defense. They allow 2.3, 2.32 yards per carry, Devin, and 82.7 yards per game. So with Bajan Robinson being the strength of this Texas team, the strength of this Tech defense is going to be stopping this, stopping the run. So that is a matchup to be looking out for. Is Bijan going to be able to get five yards and make a dent on first downs and second downs? Or is this Tech unit going to be forcing Texas into those Long second and eights, or you know, third, possibly third and eights. They've got good safeties, strong inside linebackers with Krishan Merriweather, who's their second leading tackler, Devin, with Josiah Pereira on the outside. Run stopping, huge up front. Another one of their strengths. This is where they get most of their damage done with Edge Tyree Wilson, who's the leading tackler, uh, nose tackle Jalen Hutchings, and defensive tackles Devin, Tony Bradford, and Philip Blitty. But the weakness on that side as well. Is going to be that pass defense. They are 67 in pass defense, allowing 211 pass yards per game, Devin. So it's going to be on Hudson Card to get the ball to the receivers in this game. And yet again, you steal all my talking points. Much appreciated. Uh, to start, just Donovan Smith, as you said, he would be the second stringer. However, Shuck is injured. However, Dylan, we don't even know at this point if he is able to come back for this game. I haven't seen any reports indicate that he is but I know that they were saying it's a two-week injury at the point of about two weeks ago so there might be three quarterbacks in the mix here I know you talked about Morton already but I'm just going to assume that Smith is the guy for this week and as you said he's put up some numbers I mean if you just looked at 785 uh, yeah, passing yards even not being the only quarterback out there and then seven touchdowns you think okay you know it's decent but then he has five interceptions So there's been some inefficiencies there. Longhorns are going to have to need to capitalize there. And you were talking about running backs. Obviously, you have your Todd Brooks and the guy that has never graduated, Dylan. He's just going to be there forever, seemingly. So Roderick Thompson. At this point, I hope he's getting three grad degrees, even though it's only been like four years. 
He's just been a playmaker since he was born. He has three COVID years, Devin. I think he has like three <laughs> COVID years. I'm telling you. He's been a playmaker since he was born in Lubbock, it seems like. No, obviously yeah. he's not from Lubbock, but no. Mm-hmm. That that man terrorizes Texas. At least I think it was about two years ago. You know, he was injured, I believe, last year. So a little bit different. Seems like he's healthy now. So someone to watch out for. But offensively, Dylan, I'm more worried about those wide receivers for Tech. They have, I wrote it down, four guys within seven receiving yards of the lead or of the team lead for receiving yards. And I believe they have three receivers that have two receiving touchdowns so far this season. So they do a good job of spreading the rock. Something that the Texas secondary, which has shown, has an ability to struggle. I mean, against UTSA, I don't think they necessarily did that bad in the secondary. However, there was one trick play pass by the Roadrunners that should have been deflected down and did not, and it ended up costing the Longhorns a literal touchdown play. But wide receivers to watch out for. Yet again, there's there's about four of them that can do some damage. But I put Jaron Brantley, or Bradley, excuse me, and Miles Price as the guys to watch out for. But yet again, there's a couple of them, so don't be surprised if you know Dylan, uh, you check the stats at halftime or something, and there's four guys that have 50 receiving yards. It's just part of the, uh, the tech mojo, if you will. And then you talked about defense. You, you named more names than I did. I, I put Tyree Wilson at outside linebacker yes leading the team in tackles but also in sacks with two and a half and then philip blitty yet again i love names good name guy dylan on the defensive line six foot three guy you know he's gonna do some run plugging as you're mentioning tech has shown an ability unlike the past it seems like to stop the run can Bijan get past that we will see now who are some of your x factors so for X factors on the tech side, I'm going to be looking uh, at that offensive line that I highlighted earlier. It's going to be a tough day for them. This Texas front is much improved as well as that linebacking linebacker unit. Although Overshawn will be missing that first half, Devin, but still expect Texas to be creating pressure. It's all going to be about how can can they give Smith enough time in the pocket to make some throws and hopefully get some long balls out rather than just some quick throws or having scramble for his life, Devin. Then also. Something to highlight is the special teams unit is going to have to play a lot better for Texas. Texas Techs are. They have a struggling punter. They've got missed field goals and missed punts in these three first three games. In that field position battle, Devin, this is going to be surprising, but this might be a defensive game, not as high scoring as people would expect a Texas for Texas Tech game to, to play out as. But field position is going to be huge, and if Tech is muffing these punts or sending one off to the side with, like, short punts, Advantage is going to go to Texas. And then, Devin, for my X factor, it's going to be Hudson Card. We know what Bijan Robinson can do, but can Hudson Card make good plays, make that deep ball that Texas Tech is going to be allowing him to make? Can he be accurate with those? And just hopefully um, look the way you'd want him to look. I can't believe you mentioned special teams. I'm going to cry as tears of joy. I mean, this is this is an improvement, Dylan, on those uh, X factors. But no, uh, I'm still not at that point, unfortunately. I have not grown as much as you have on this podcast. Uh, my X factor, I could have copped out and said Texas defensive backs and honestly have been perfectly fine with that. As I said, Texas Tech has four legit receivers out wide. But I also went with you, and I went Hudson Card, or quarterbacks in general, also for Tech, as you mentioned. The main question I have for Card, and the one that he's going to have to solve, is can he connect on that deep ball? I know Xavier Worthy and him just don't seem to be on the same page so far this season. And Card's been doing good on the uh, short and you know intermediate throws, but can he connect on one or two to keep that Tech defense honest? I mean, we're going to have to see. We haven't seen it yet. Now on Tech side, Donovan Smith, if he can, Dylan, if he can just stay efficient, like Tech is in a great position at least to stay pretty competitive, if not pull off the relative upset home victory. I mean, yet again, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. If he can stay clean there, it's going to be a good game. Now, uh, Dylan, uh, I know you like danger level here, especially in Lubbock. What are you feeling? Yeah, Devin, you might be surprised with this, but I actually have it at an eight. I don't know if it's because I'm overrating home, home teams. I know <laughs> the statistics would point at, it does not matter if a team is better. They will win on the road for the most part, statistically. But, Devin, this is a hostile environment. This is a Texas Tech team. This is this is their Super Bowl. Texas is leaving soon for the SEC. Tech might not be able to play them for a while after this. They're at home. 
There's bad blood, especially it's going to carry over from the basketball season as well. These kids in the uh, in the student section for Tech are going to be up for it. And Devin, highlight, 2.30 p.m. Luckily, it's not a home game, but I don't know if you know Tech's Tech kids, uh, Devin. I have a brother that goes there. 2.30 is perfect time for them to get all warmed up and ready oh, for this game. Gosh, yeah. This crowd is going to be <laughs> raucous, Devin. It's going to be tough. This is a big game for Texas to see if they've changed as a program from last year, Devin. Alabama was circled. Everyone knew about that game. Texas was going to get up for that game. Are they going to come down from that high and be able to play a Tech team that is going to come at them right off the bat and hungry, Devin? And this is a defense designed to shut down this running back group and offensive line or just the rushing game in general for Texas, Devin, with Texas Tech having – their strongest point of their team being that rush defense. So it's going to be on Hudson Card, who has been shaky as times. We don't know if he's going to be able to, you know, carry this team. If it was yours, it'd be a whole different story. I have a lot more confidence in this Texas team right now. But Card's going to have to beat them with his arm, Devin, and something that we haven't seen. So there's going to be have to a lot of things are going to have to happen. Texas is going to have to be going at a rival, showing that they want it more than the other team. And Card, again, again, needs to show that his arm can carry this team. To a victory, but Texas improvement on defense, Devin, is the saving grace. This is why I'm hesitant to pick Tech just in general to win this game, especially with Smith or Texas Tech having to rely on hero ball from Smith. Hero ball is great, Devin, if the game's tied and come down the last possession, but if you're trying to do it all game and you get into an early deficit, it's not going to work. But Devin, the, re the reason I was highlighting Morton earlier is what I'm afraid of is that Smith struggles off the bat. And he comes in and shows that talent that a lot of Tech fans are expecting him to have and the ability to make plays, as well as not being afraid to throw the ball downfield. If he comes in in the second quarter and Texas is only up seven or ten points, I'd just be a little nervous. But maybe that's just, you know, the anxiety or me or, or you know, uh -huh. trying to figure out the right word. Right word but, like, ugh, just any adversity going Texas' way last year just makes me nervous. Yeah, I mean, I gave danger level here a five. I mean, that's still semi considerable. I mean, five for me is like wheel. It's it's basically the wheel C rating. Uh, eight. I understand home environment completely. If it was only home environment factor, I'd give it a ten for tech. And you know, you tech fans watching, take that as a compliment. But yet again, there's question marks on both sides. You kind of mentioned it. Donovan Smith is he gonna play great or is he? Not going to play so great. I mean, Texas, we talked about off-air. Texas makes any quarterback look like the uh, Heisman winner <laughs> every week, Dylan, really regardless of the uh, final score. I mean, UTSA's quarterback, he, he, he started off strong. In the second half, not so much. But, you know, this is a still a big Power 5 program, obviously, in Tech. Camp Card connect on the deep balls, we said, with Quinn Ewers most likely out, unless Sark has something really big up his sleeve. You know, we know Card has the potential. He's one of the top-rated quarterbacks for a reason, Dylan. Can he be a little more decisive? I think that's really the thing that's been killing him. And the deep ball is just not connecting. I mean, it's, it's close. But, yeah, Tech, I don't know. It's this, this team has depth at positions, Dylan, such as receiver. And they have, you know, guys on defense, as you talked about. But usually when it comes to Tech, there's that one guy that scares you, you know. And after this weekend, there might be that one guy that scares me. But heading in, we'll see who has to take that, you know, claim. So right now, five, still pretty considerable. But it's a uh, wait and see rating. I know it's a little bit of a cheat. But uh, Dylan, prediction? Did I? I feel like I did talk about. It, but Sark needs to bring you in for a pep talk. I think that was that was pretty beautiful. You gave a sermon over there. But uh, I'll I'll let you do the prediction now. I think I'm just hurting Devin from last year in which we were confidently picking Texas to beat teams um, like Tech. Well, what, not, sorry, they did beat Tech, but like TCU. But teams like Tech, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the five-game stretch in which Kansas better yet, where we picked them confidently to win or to eke one out, and it didn't happen because the other teams just wanted it more. So I guess that's why I'm really hesitant. This is the game, like I said, turning point for Tech. If they win this, I'm going to have a lot more confidence going going through the season, especially with viewers coming back, that we can make these kind of picks against teams like Texas Tech, in which Texas can hopefully handle teams that they have more talent than. But then my score prediction is going to be close. I've got Texas 24, Tech 23. I kind of want to almost pick 9-6, to six, Devin, because I just really <laughs> do think it's going to be a defensive struggle 
or not defense struggle, offensive struggles, which the defense kind of just shuts down both offenses and field position does come into play. But that saving grace is that tech special teams that if it does become who gets the ball near the 50, Texas is going to have the advantage there as well as NC state kind of given the blueprint for Texas. You got to pressure Smith, make him make mistakes, throw picks, make sure the DBs are, you know, taking advantage of those opportunities and making those picks, but state got off to a 20 to seven lead at halftime. Devin, they were also gifted six points on a pick six and tech was unable to stay consistent on offense. And that might change just because this is a rivalry game in Texas tech is going to be wanting this game a lot more, but I, it, it, it's tough to go with, with a team that I know with Texas improved defense, it, it's hard to pick a team like tech in which you just, Texas Tech fans are going to be praying to God that their that their offense can just get some sort of momentum and not shoot themselves in the foot. So that's why I'm going with Texas 24 to 23. You know, improved defense, Dylan. Uh, it's still early in the season talking about uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. I'm going to hold off on any comment there. I mean, it has looked better, but yet again, we're uh, only a couple weeks in. I also have Texas winning. I went a little bit bigger. I went 41 to 27 here, but I also have the same concerns as Dylan where I could easily see this being – a close game that you know you're gonna need some nail clippers doing by the end of it in order to save yourself from chewing them off but uh you know last season i'm i'm sure all you guys know at this point and if you haven't you've probably already read about it this week longhorns beat tech 70 35 last season a lot of players are still from that group with tech however dylan as you said new coaching staff it's at home for tech a lot of things have changed and really the key, as you were talking about, that defensive front for Texas and quarterback Smith, can the defense force him to be uncomfortable? That's something we'll have to wait and see. If B. John Robinson, however, and Roshan Johnson go off again this upcoming weekend, then it's not necessarily going to matter. However, Dylan, as you said, Tech has had a good run defense this season, so it's not a guarantee that's going to happen. If it does for Texas, then, you know, Card has some leeway to do what he wants. But it looks like, as you said many times throughout the video, it's going to be on Hudson Card to make throws. Can he do that? I got Texas winning, like I said, 41-27. to I feel like it could be a closer game, but we'll wait and see. But more importantly, who do you have winning this game? Let us know your prediction down below. I want to see some score predictions. Uh, You know, we got some close ones last weekend, Dylan, that beat mine, I think, and beat yours. But, uh... Nothing against us here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.